from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I greet you in his most precious and worthy name. Pray that you all have been having a fantastic week thus far. I have been um, a bit busy, but enjoying this beautiful day that we have here in Atlanta. Um, I believe we are in the 60s today. Um, it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. As you can see, the sky is almost clear. And it's just a wonderful day. Wonderful day. Um, so it's a good day to share the word of God. Um, so come on in, everybody. Come on in. Let's fellowship together for a few moments. We're going to pray in just a moment. And I want to talk to you about something that I believe is... Um, of utmost importance, of utmost importance. I um, I believe we had in the last couple of weeks or so, we have talked about frustration and, um, you know, dealing with, many people dealing with frustration. Today, we really want to talk about what faith actually is and why for some people, their faith is not working. Uh, pray that this video will help you um, to mature and uh, most of all to experience the promises that have been left for us as believers in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this moment. This is a divine moment. We're grateful to be in this moment, in this time where the kingdom of God is advancing. Thank you that uh, you kept us hidden until now. Every believer who is watching, who is participating, you kept us until now. This very moment that you're going to do something great, this is the conclusion, the hour in which the church shall do her greatest works. For your word says that uh, we will do exploits in this hour. I thank you, Father, that you have never left yourself without a witness. The witness of your spirit is here. And I thank you that we witness what your spirit does. Send the word today. Let the word come forth with clarity and power and demonstration. Encourage us and help us as we grow in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, again, welcome everybody. It's good to see everybody who has logged on. Um, my schedule has not been as um, permissible as it was at once. I could just come to you all uh, just at a whim or every Monday. And now I kind of have to uh, be a little more strategic in uh, my time or with my time so uh, you may not get as much interaction, but we try to make sure that when we do interact with one another, that the word of God is rich, something that you can apply immediately. Um, well, we want to talk about this question today. Why is my faith not working? I believe that this is one of the frustrations that many believers are faced with because there are some things that you desire, some things you want to see happen, and they are not. They, they are not happening um, either at all or not with the kind of momentum that you would like to see them happening, and it leads to frustration. Now, I want you to understand frustration is the goal for the enemy. The enemy wants you to be frustrated because once you get in frustration, you get out of the disciplines that is required for faith to move. All right. So first of all, let's deal with a couple of things here. Most people uh, are not moving. Let me not say most. Many people are not moving in faith because they think that faith is accompanied by feelings. So if they feel positive or if they feel negative, their faith is pulled by feeling. 
And we have to be very careful because the reality is what most people are calling faith is actually new age. And the new age teaching is about your feelings and you go with your gut. And if you're not careful, you'll be a believer that trusts in your gut. You'll be a believer that goes by feelings. And I don't know about you, but I feel a certain way about where we are. I don't know about you, but I feel a certain way about that person. I don't know about you. I feel. And as long as you are in your feelings, trust me, you are not in faith. Faith is not a feeling. I need you to put that on the screen because I need everybody who comes in to this chat at some point later to see faith is not a feeling. Listen, faith can bring you to places where you feel, but faith is not a feeling. Faith is substance. Faith is evidence. Faith is proof. Listen to me. If you have faith, you then have proof. That's what faith is for. Faith is not to make something happen. Faith is evidence that something is going to happen. Did you catch that? So there are a lot of people who have put their faith in God and because their idea of faith is rooted in their feelings, they've put their feelings in God. And so if God does what makes them happy, their faith is increased. Oh, I really believe God now. But when you have faith, what you are saying is, doesn't matter how I feel, it doesn't matter what I'm saying, this is the evidence. This is what is already resolved. That is why you must put your faith in God because God is the only stable existence in your life. Everything else is going to, is in flux. Everything and everybody else can change, can move, can maneuver, can manipulate, can fail, can fall, everything else. That's why we must put our faith, put our confidence in God. Now, let's deal with this uh, where, where the enemy has been causing believers to move into new age. Because new age as most other false religions, they build their premise on foundations that believers, kingdom believers, actually have. This is the only reason it works. The only reason that false religion works is because there's some sense of reality or truth connected to it. So we've got a lot of gifted people, right? A lot of people who move in the realm of the spirit. Now, I want you to understand that if you are moving in the realm of the spirit and you are doing it without faith, you are in there illegally. If you're doing it because somebody told you, if you say these five things, it will come to pass for you, that's illegal. If Jesus said that uh, uh, anybody who comes to the Father except through me is a thief and a robber, all right? So I want you to catch what Jesus is now saying. Your faith cannot work if the way you access the spirit realm is through anything other than your belief on Jesus, your access through him being our door. Any other access, you're a thief and a robber. Now, what's that mean? That means that anybody who goes in through other any other way than Jesus has to steal what they're about to get. They have to rob the spirit realm to get it. Now, how many of us believers are in this violent posture? Many believers, we take this violent posture because we feel like we got to fight to get it. Well, listen, if you got faith, faith says it's already done. Now, faith does not, watch this, faith does not say it's already done. Faith is the evidence 
that there is something that has already been resolved concerning this thing that I'm praying for. So what are we looking at now? We're looking at when we read Hebrews chapter 11, the, the, the scripture called the faith scripture by the book called the faith scripture. We see that every person who is listed it says, by faith, they did this. By faith, they did that. By faith, they did this. But if you read the story behind each person that they're talking about, you will see that each person that they are speaking about received some instructions from God and they acted on those instructions and those instructions being acted upon brought the result. Here's why faith is not working for many believers. Number one, we want to feel like it's going to work. We want to feel confident. We want to feel positive. We don't want to be burdened by it. We want it to fall in place easily. Let me tell you something. There are some things that God has said to you that you are mature enough that you can get those things now right? Now faith. But there are other things that God has said to you or about you that you've got to persevere and parts of your carnal man has to be sacrificed in order for you to realize what faith has been saying concerning you. Listen, God is not blessing your finances when you squander your money. God is not giving you more to squander. Stop saying you're going to be a millionaire, a multimillionaire, and how you're going to be a blessing to everybody. If you don't take care of the money God is giving to you now, there is no more coming. That would be a thief and a robber. Let me, let me give you a small example of something. I was just in the store. Um, I had to pick up a couple items. And so when I was in checkout, the, the, the young lady who was waiting on me, she said, would you like to donate money to the Toys for Tots? Well, I'm very active or have been for years anyway, active with Toys for Tots. And so I said, absolutely. And she gave me the options of what I could donate. And so I, I chose what um, option uh, that I wanted as far as my donation. And um, she said, thank you. And, you know, she went, you know, most people don't do this and most people don't. And I thought about it. Believers, believers who don't find a joy in giving should not pray for getting because the faith necessary for getting is giving. Now I want to see, because I want, I want this to be clear that faith is not a feeling. Faith is a word. Faith is substance. Faith is something that has been secured by God that says, this is what's going to happen. All right. So if God says, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing, then we are out of faith if we don't process ourselves as already blessed. Did you hear me? Now, you might be temporarily out of money. You might be temporarily uh, in a depressed state. You might be temporarily uh, low on joy. None of those things, however, move you from faith because faith is evidence. It's it is as if let's let's put it in natural uh, a natural concept. Let's say that you uh, are a police officer in the area in which you live, and you go into a house and you see blood all over the wall. You see a gun on the floor, and you see shells from the bullets that were shot on the ground near the gun. Do you know what you do with that? You come to a conclusion, not based on your feelings. You don't say, I feel like somebody died in here. I feel like somebody got shot in here. I feel like something happened in this room. You don't have to feel like nothing. The blood on
I don't know if I have sound, y'all. Let me see. Okay, I don't know if I'm back. No sound still, no sound. No sound, no sound, no sound. Sound is back. All right. Perfect. Listen, I've been trying to get, I, I somebody sent me a commercial <laughs> and um, I've been trying to delete that commercial off my phone. And every time I play a song, that commercial plays. I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, the Lord will help me. Anyway, uh, the, the last point that we made was that you don't walk into that room as a police officer and say, I feel like somebody was murdered here. I feel like somebody was shot here. You don't have to go by feelings. There's blood on the wall. There's gun on the floor and there's bullets near the gun, shells near the gun. You know what that evidence says? The evidence says there was a crime committed here. The evidence says somebody has been murdered or at the least shot. You don't have to come to a conclusion. The evidence makes the conclusion for you. There are some things, church, there are some things that the evidence says about you. But here's the problem. If you're not careful, your feelings about things won't allow you to see the evidence. And you'll be walking in your feelings and the evidence will be right beside you. The evidence will be all around you. But because we are driven by our feelings, we are emotional creatures. And that's all of us human beings. We are emotional creatures. But because we are emotional, we will miss all of the evidence that God is sending that says this is the season he's going to do something great for you. We'll miss it all. And it's simple because we think that faith is accompanied by feelings. Now, I want to get to something very important, though, because faith honors God, right? I put my faith in him, and that's me honoring him, saying, God, I know that you know what's best. I know that you know the steps. I know that you have ordained some things to happen for me or with me, and I'm going to follow those things through, right? So, what most people do, however, is they don't understand that to move God, faith, faith honors him, right? Faith says, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to be right here. But to move God, there's an attitude that you got to connect to your faith. Now watch this. The Bible says that faith without works is dead being alone. Now, what that means is I can have all the evidence in the world. I can have all the evidence that there was a crime committed in this house. But if I do not collect the evidence and move in the direction that the evidence has taken me or is taking me, I end up letting the crime go unsolved. I let the murderer, possible murderer, get away with the crime because I don't follow the evidence. So here is what many have done. Many have evidence that they have not followed. God has said something to you. The word has said something to you. The prophets have said something to you. But what you've done is you've put it in some place, secured in a vault. A vault. You think your faith is like a vault. I'm holding on to it. Let me tell you something. Holding on to it will not make it come to pass. What evidence can you hold on to and it make you solve the crime? If you're going to solve it, you got to act on the evidence. But here's the second vein to this. Faith without works is dead being alone. One of the things that we've got to add to our faith is the attitude that requires God to notice you. Some of you, the only, the only thing stopping you from your breakthrough is your attitude won't get God's attention. God is not trying to bless the complaining faith haver. The person who is saying, I believe him, but I'm tired. I believe him, but it's long. I believe him, but it's been hard. I believe him, but the struggle is real. I believe him, but I'm not sure. I believe him. as long as you are stuck in those places, where you believe God, but your attitude concerning what he said he's going to do for you is always infected or effected by 
how you feel, you miss it. So you need to add one very important thing to your faith, and that's praise. Let me tell you why praise is so important. Praise moves God. Praise moves heaven. Do you know the Bible says that God inhabits? I don't know if I'm losing you all uh, or, or if you all hear me, but the Bible says God inhabits praise. That means that God gets enthroned on the place where you exalt him. So if you are exalting him over your finances, if you're exalting him concerning your physical body, if you're exalting him concerning your relationship, if you're exalting him concerning your business, when you where you exalt him is where he sits. Did you hear me? So you're not going to get the break breakthrough and the blessing that, that you really, really need complaining. You have to put some praise in your lips, some praise on your mouth. See, here's one of the things that that the the Bible talks about. David says that when they were in captivity, that the, their captives required a song of them. And he said, how can we sing the Lord's song when we're in a strange land? Let me tell you something. This is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to be in such stress. The enemy wants you to be under so much pressure and in depression that your praise is taken from you. And once your praise is taken from you, watch this, even though faith does not require a feeling, once your praise is taken from you, you kill your own faith. Do you hear me? You kill your own faith. You start speaking against what you believe. You start speaking against the word that God has spoken over your life. You start speaking negatively over yourself. And it doesn't take the devil's voice to do it. All that happens is you look at the evidence and don't take the evidence as proof that God is doing something major in my life. You know why? Because what we do, and this is something we have to work on, believers, we're living in instant gratification. That's where we are. We live in this age and stage of instant gratification. And what happens, unfortunately, is if we don't get instantly gratified by or some satisfaction out of what we've been asking or believing for, immediately our attention span for that thing is over. But God is the ancient of days. He was here before time. You mean to tell me that you can't trust God who was here before time began. And if he tells you through his word, he's going to bless you. And then the prophecy comes and says he's going to bless you. You got all of this evidence, but your feelings are still what you serve. I just don't feel it. The, 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 they told me to raise my hands and give God praise. I don't have nothing to raise my hands and give God praise for. You haven't seen the evidence. Let me tell you, if I could, I would take all of us back in time and I would walk you uh, to Golgotha so you could see him carrying that cross up that mountain that he was about to die. And I want to make sure that we make these two points distinct, very distinctive. Number one, God hates sin. God hates sin so much that he sent his own only begotten righteous holy son to die or to be punished for the sin. But I want you to catch the flip side of that is God loves the sinner so much that he sent his only begotten son who was holy and righteous to die in their stead. Now, if that's not first of all enough evidence for you to have joy, I don't know what else we need to do. See, this is one of the things that I think we've made an error as ministers of the gospel. We've erred in trying to get people to praise God for houses. Well, what happens if he doesn't give me the house? We've erred in trying to get people to thank God for their spouse, their boo that's coming. Well, what happens if the boo never shows up? We've erred in making people believe that they should thank God for the finances that are coming. What if the finances don't show up? But you know what we can do? We can tell them that on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And on that cross, Jesus died for you so that you now could have the connection to the father that you currently enjoy. Think about if we would just turn our faith away from these 
temporal things. I'm sitting here looking at these trees. These trees are beautiful. These trees are beautiful. Uh, there's some yellow trees, leaves. There's some green leaves. There's some uh, like an orange color, uh, reddish color. And then there are trees that have no leaves on it at all. Do you know what? I will tell you that from the looks of things, this is fall. From the looks of the trees, this is fall. But the sun is out and I'm sweating. So it's warm. But what I want to tell you is this. When I look at these trees, the trees are evidence. The trees are evidence that the season has changed. Now, see, here is something that we've got to process. How is it that the trees can go through a change of season and never lose value? Glory to God. I told you, I see some trees out here that have no leaves at all. All. all their leaves have fallen on somebody's car or on the ground and there's somebody who wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for fall because those leaves fall on the ground and they get to come out and blow those leaves and and mulch those leaves and and gather those leaves and use them for something else but you know what the tree does not say i cannot believe that those other trees that are always green always have leaves no what happens happens is the tree goes through the season knowing that the evidence is already here every year around this time i lose my leaves Woo. every year around this time something happens and all my leaves fall on the ground but what i know is when fall and winter ends, I get into a season called spring. How many springs do you need before you see them as evidence? How many times are you going to be upset because the leaves fell off the tree? How many times? Well, by now, you should have altered yourself in expectation and say, you know what? This year, I'm going to praise through that. This year, I'm going to sing a song during that time because I know it's temporary. We have people, I mean, born again believers who are so caught up in temporal issues that the temporal issues are making them believe that life is not worth living. Temporal issues, something that could change. Listen, do you know a lot of the things you think you need, you don't really need? Let me tell you something. You run around and talk about, I wish I had a, a good relationship and I wish I had, I wish I had. Do you know if somebody just wrote you a check for $500,000, a lot of the things that you wish you had, you'd be content. So there's a lot of things you think you need. You don't really need. It would change your life. If somebody wrote you a check for half a million dollars. Your life would change. The things you complained about, you wouldn't stop complaining. That means it's temporary and something inside time can fix it. So what do we have to do? Believers, first of all, put God back on the throne and you get up off the throne. Stop trusting in your feelings. Stop trusting in your prayer life. One of the things that the Holy Spirit kept reminding me of recently while I was praying, because Holy Spirit had me, um, Holy Spirit had me praying in a realm that was not comfortable for me. Meaning I like the I like to pray with understanding because I like to know where I am in my prayer. I like to know what my maturity level is, what you trusted me with. But the Lord had me praying in an uncomfortable place. And this is what he said to me. He said, don't worry. I just want you to be open to it in your spirit because I'm going to have the Holy Spirit pray it. I need, I need, to, I need to drop this one on y'all. This is for the, those of us that want to be used by God. <laughs> Those of us that want him to work with us, you know, like, Lord, let me work with you on this. He told me, he said, he said, he, he led me back to Romans chapter eight and I'm reading it and I, and I run through again where it says how the Holy Spirit prays for us and he prays perfectly for us because he knows the will of God. So what that means is sometime you can't know what you're praying because you're praying more than likely what you want. 
even if what you want is God to use you. There's a scripture in the Bible that says in every house, there's vessels of honor and vessels to dishonor. That means that you can only be what God ordained you to be. So a lot of our frustration as it relates to faith is because we're trying to make ourselves become something instead of allowing God to bring us into it. That's called maturing into it. You know what I did not have to do as a boy? I did not have to make myself grow hair on my face. I did not have to make myself go through puberty. I did not have to make myself get a deeper voice. There was no five-year-old me looking in the mirror, drawing a mustache and drawing a beard. You know why? Because in that boy was a man. The boy just had to mature. Here is what every believer has to finally come to the conclusion of. Inside of every believer is a son of the living God. Every one of us, Jesus is living on the inside of us. Did you hear me? Christ is living on the inside of you right now. But do you know what the, 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 the enemy wants you to do? He wants you to look at all of the other evidence. I don't have the job. I don't have the house. I don't have the relationship. I don't have the business. I don't have the plan. I don't have friends. He wants you to look at all of that because all of that of position for maturity. And you will not mature per correctly, properly, or in the right time. When your leaves fall off your tree, that's it for me. That was the last, that was my last fall right there, Lord. I, 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 I can't go through another fall. You don't understand that the fall has to happen. The fall has to happen. The winter has to happen so that the spring can be appreciated. <laughs> and you know what? Depending on who you talk to, the fall is the most beautiful season because all the trees show you how different they are. They all, all of them green in the spring and in the summer. But then in the fall, some of them show you that God is an artist and that God has a different stencil in the fall. And then some of these leaves are going to be brown and some of them are going to be red and some of them are going to be yellow. I saw a tree the other day, everything on it was white. And watch this. It only lasted two days because two days later, I went by that tree. Everything on that tree was on the ground. It was only white for a couple of days. Served its purpose. Let me say something to you. Until we put our faith back in God and not in our own feelings about where we are or what's going on, faith is not working. Your faith is not working because you have feelings about where you are. You got feelings about God and what God did and didn't do and people and what they did and didn't do and who's for you and who's against you. You got feelings. Those feelings are affecting, they're even infecting faith because that's not faith. It's not faith. Faith is evidence. Now faith is the substance of something you are hoping for and is evidence of something that I cannot see. I cannot hold it. I cannot point to it. I cannot show you it. I can't drive you to it. But you know what? Every, everything in me knows it's already done because God said it. Here is our problem, church. Our problem. We have moved so far away from the resume of God. I'm thankful that God is not intimidated by the resume of man, the resume of women. I'm, I'm grateful that he's not intimidated. Fault you all. It's my fault. I did not silence my phone and I'm getting phone calls. I'm going to let you all go. I'm going to let you all go. And next time I'll make sure that I can't be interrupted. Okay. I'll talk to you all soon. All right. Bye.